was that, like, 33? Cedric, Michael, Andrew, Gardner, Oliver, Ryan, and Sterling Heights. Oh, I don't know. Oliver, Ryan, and Sterling Heights. Oh my god, he's... Oh my god, he's... Macomb 5, dispatch with priority. Macomb 5. Someone just struck our patrol cars and the uh, Mustang. So you may have heard the national news story going around. A car has hit another car. There was a car accident. I'm not sure why this is news everywhere. This happened in Connecticut, and this Detroit news site is covering it. Oh, it was a Tesla. That would explain it. And it was on autopilot. But seriously, if you haven't heard, on Saturday, December 7th, 2019, a Tesla Model 3 that was using autopilot crashed into the back of a stop police car. The driver admitted that he was looking in his back seat, checking on his dog. Who knows how long he was doing that. And beyond that, there aren't a whole lot of details. The cop car was on the road in a lane of traffic. They had stopped to help a disabled vehicle, and that disabled vehicle was also still on the highway in the lane of traffic. The Model 3 ran into the back of the cop car and then proceeded to continue and also ran into the disabled car. But why would a Tesla on autopilot run into a stopped car in its lane? Well, let's talk about why this is pretty much a non-event and why autopilot didn't stop. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Chris and I have been jokingly referred to by a lot of my subscribers as an unofficial autopilot expert. Available. There we go. It's on. Navigate an autopilot challenge. Okay, so I'm on ramp here. Feel free to blast me for that down in the comments. If you're new to the channel, I drive at least 70 miles a day and 50 of those are on the highway using Navigate on Autopilot. So I have a lot of experience using Autopilot and I received enough emails and direct messages from you guys asking me why this happened. You were concerned, why did Autopilot hit a stopped car? It should be pretty easy for Autopilot to see an entire car in a lane on the highway, that's kind of its whole job, is to track cars and stop for them. So why did this accident happen? Well, unfortunately, these types of accidents do happen from time to time, whether the car is driving itself, keeping itself in the lane or a human is driving there are plenty of examples of this happening and actually this article from NHTSA is saying that there's been an increase this article's from earlier in the year in Illinois drivers hit 15 state police troopers or vehicles while the officers were stopped along a road with their lights flashing in the first three months of 2019 which is nearly double the number of crashes like this in all of 2018 so it should be pretty easy for a person to see a cop stopped on the road or at the side of the road with their lights flashing. You'll hear some dog noises during this, so excuse those. Yet these accidents still happen. So the driver of the Tesla admitted that he was checking on his dog in the back seat. Yeah, so if the title of all of these articles was driver crashes into police car while checking on his dog in the back seat, it would have been more like, oh, what an idiot. No big deal. Rather than all the articles you're seeing and even senators talking about wanting to get rid of autopilot because it's unsafe. It really makes absolutely no sense. You get all kinds of warnings when you use autopilot. When you purchase the car, you can't even use autopilot until you turn it on and go through a series of warnings. Every time you engage the system, it's warning you. Keep your hands on the wheel and your eyes on the road. Be ready to take over at any time. So the simple fact is this person was abusing autopilot as people have abused their privileges for a really long time. So while this incident is a serious issue that deserves to be covered by the news, it's not an autopilot issue, it's a driver issue. But it still leaves the question, why didn't autopilot stop for this car? Uh, that's kind of what autopilot does, it tracks cars and it stops for them when it needs to. Well, right in the owner's manual of the Model 3, and I'm sure of the SNX2, it gives you autopilot limitations. One of those limitations is above 50 miles per hour, the system may not stop for stopped cars. 
The Model 3 user guide states, Traffic Aware Cruise Control cannot detect all objects and, especially in situations when you are driving over 50 miles per hour, may not brake or decelerate when a vehicle or object is only partially in the driving lane or when a vehicle you are following moves out of your driving path and a stationary object or slow moving vehicle is in front of you. So the first main takeaway here that I think most people understand but can never be repeated enough is there is no such thing as a fully autonomous car yet. Even when using autopilot, and if you watch my videos, you hear me say this constantly, you still have to be paying attention, your hands are still on the wheel. The car is very capable and does some really impressive things, but at the end of the day, we are still driving these cars. There's even a senator saying he wants autopilot disabled, he sent letters to NHTSA and to Tesla, and this is just ridiculous. This guy's actually been saying this for a while, and as far as I've seen, he doesn't show any data. He just kind of keeps insisting that autopilot is dangerous, and if that's the case, then you'd have to blame Verizon for people texting and driving, and Budweiser for people drunk driving. The fact is, people unfortunately will always abuse their privileges. So why didn't autopilot stop? That's kind of the main question here. With the current implementation of Autopilot, the main thing it's using for its traffic detection of cars moving ahead is a radar. And this actually isn't all that different to any other company that has traffic aware cruise control or adaptive cruise control. These cars use radar to detect moving objects around them and adjust their speed and distance accordingly. One drawback of radar is that they have to ignore static objects, meaning anything not moving, because you don't want false positives from street signs or debris in the road. Slamming on the brakes when you don't need to is also something you'd want to avoid. So the fact is, any car sold today with adaptive cruise control is going to have the same drawback. If someone in any other car crashed into something because they were looking in the back seat, it would just be another dummy, nothing to do with Tesla, nothing about autopilot being extra dangerous. So what could Tesla potentially do about this problem? Well, I'm hoping sooner rather than later, Autopilot will start recognizing first responder vehicles. Autopilot has recently gained the ability to see traffic cones on the road. It's also gained the ability to see stop signs in the past few weeks. Almost a year ago, it gained the ability to see red lights and warn you if you're using autopilot and it looks like you might go through the red light. Yes, got it, finally. The forward-facing autopilot camera can see over 800 feet ahead, which would at least give enough time to flash a warning to the driver telling them to get over. Much like autopilot can do when it thinks you're going to go through a stop sign or a stoplight. So how is Tesla ever supposed to have hands-off, level 4 or level 5 full self-driving with this limitation. Well, the goal is to eventually almost completely rely on the cameras surrounding the car. There are eight total cameras on the outside of the car, three pointing forwards, two on each side, and one in the back. The goal is for these cameras to do all of the speed detection, all of the obstacle detection, speed limit signs, traffic signs, just like we do with our own two eyes. So now, as I always say, Tesla always says, pretty much anyone that knows even a little bit about autopilot always says, you're still driving if you're going to use this system or you're planning on getting a Tesla and you're curious, you do have to pay attention. You always need to be watching the road, hands on the wheel. In my experience, autopilot combined with myself, a driver, is the safest of all worlds. Autopilot on its own is not going to cut it. I, of course, can drive by myself, but at the same time, Autopilot can see a lot of stuff that I won't see. Autopilot can see two cars ahead due to the radar bouncing off the car in front of me and detecting that car, and I've actually been saved by this before. The car in front of the car I was following hit the brakes really hard and my car started to slow down, and I didn't know why because the car in front of me wasn't slowing down. While at the last second, the car in front of me swerved, to avoid the car in front of them stopping, and luckily, because Autopilot was doing a really good job, I had already slowed down enough to not come dangerously close to them. Let me know your thoughts on this one, the driver, the safety of Autopilot, your opinions on other driver assist systems. People have been pretty hard on this guy, and you know, everybody makes mistakes. He was doing something really stupid. I can't say I would be looking in the back seat at my dogs while I'm driving, you know, 70 plus miles an hour on the highway, but I am not looking forward to the day if I ever do get in an accident, whether it's my fault or not, because I know there's going to be a lot of people pointing fingers at me, Autopilot, uh, before they know any facts. It's just going to happen. I am working on upgrading my space, getting the background looking a little nicer. You can see I have a pretty sweet picture of the Cybertruck here. Let me know what you think of this setup if you like this style of videos. This video is sponsored by the Model 3 Part Shop. You can get 15% off anything site-wide with the code DIRTYTESLA. Link to their website is in the description. Thanks for watching. I look forward to talking to you down in the comments, and you will see me in the next video.